Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I just got through talking uh, about you and calling you stupid. And I was putting up my material, and I had another thought on my mind, you know. I thought about Dr. King. Two days from now, we will be celebrating Dr. King's birthday. And I thought to myself, I just called you stupid. I called you ignorant. I called you foolish. Then I asked myself, did Dr. King do that? Did Dr. King call you all these truths that I just got to refer to? He might have, but I can't recall him saying it. I haven't heard any videos or preaching tapes where he called you stupid and foolish. Well, he may not have called you stupid and foolish, but today I have the right, based upon my observation, to call you stupid and foolish. So whatever Dr. King did, it didn't eradicate the stupidity that you have, the ignorance that you have, and the foolishness you have. You're still there. And the fact that you say Dr. King didn't call you all these bad names and he used all the right language and made you feel good and stuff like that. You gave him streets that you can name after him. You gave him boulevards that you can name after him. You might have gave him some buildings or schools that you named after him. You might even gave him a holiday and a big old statue in Washington. But I guarantee you, Dr. King, if he knew that's all he was going to get out of this deal, he'd probably still be walking around here. Then again, he probably wouldn't because freedom requires that you act a certain kind of way. And you're living in hell where freedom will get your butt killed. And that's the reason I can sit here and call every last one of you foolish and stupid and ignorant. Because you are scared to death to die. And there's no way you can ever, ever be free if you're afraid to die. Now, you mother sitting on the church bench, I know you hate to hear that, but your butt is scared to die too. Deacons, all of you, every last one of you, know that in order to stand up for truth, in order to stand up for justice, in order to stand up for God and God's way against this world, to be bold enough to do it, you got to have some faith in God, hoping that he'll take you <laughs> once they kill your butt, because they going to kill your butt. They're going to kill you just as sure as you stood up for God. And why would they kill you? Because you're in hell. And there's no heavenliness on this plane in America. Ain't no heavenliness in America that's going to save your life when the devil gets ready to kill you. You know that. And you will always be a slave until you overcome fear of death. You will give your life. You will work your butt to the bones. You will do anything trying to stop, not rock the boat. You will, some of you will work four jobs and get your kids, if they're still at home, to work two or three jobs just to make the ends meet if it got to that point rather than trying to stand up. No, you ain't rocking no boat. You are not rocking any boat. And when you look at those black men that's being shot down by cops out there, that's because they are tired of living in this hell. And the fact that some white guy with a gun that tells nothing about them, tells them to be still and try to control and manipulate their lives at the moment, they're telling them to go to hell. And they'll get shot down. And you, the people, look at the door talking about my kids getting shot down, going through all these changes. And you know darn well you don't give a heck about your kids. You don't give a heck about your kids. If you care about your kids, you care about yourself. Because if you don't care about yourself, you can't do nothing for your kids. Now, I thought I was through with this. I'm tired of fussing at you. I'm tired of fussing at you. I had a guy tell me one day, well, look, Eddie. Everybody got their beliefs about God. I say to myself, yes, we do. Ain't it a gas that how screwed up we are? I don't care what belief you got or what belief I got. We still sitting in the middle of shit. And so what we think about God ain't worth a damn. So don't come telling me we got our own beliefs about God. 
all of it came from the devil. Your belief came from the devil. My original belief came from the devil. But I got a chance to wake up. Let me tell you something. I didn't just wake up. So I don't get too mad with you. But not waking up. I didn't just wake up. It wasn't laying down one day and I all of a sudden I woke up with sense. No, my friend. It didn't happen like that. I put myself in a situation to say that I was leaving this earth. That wasn't my intent. I just was doing something stupid that I was finna leave the earth. And for some strange reason, the power of the spirit, what method was used, I don't know. The part that I couldn't see, I saw part of it. And it came into play. And it saved my ignorant ass. And it is because of that, done in such a way that I know no human being could do it. I know it was done by something I can't see, touch, or feel, but the evidence was right there. And something that wonderful and something that good and that great, I give the authority of it to God. And it is because of that that I sit here 40 some years traveling all across this country, preaching in pulpits, preaching on street corners, preaching in clubs, on radio, on cable access, on CDs and DVDs, DVDs, trying to wake you up <laughs> to no avail. Boy, I'm telling you guys are really sweet. I remember, let me, and I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to go. <clears throat> I came to Minnesota about mm, close to 38 years ago, 36, something like that. And I was in a situation where I was around a lot of preachers. And there was a lady who was a preacher. She was had a lot of faith. And so she had been here much longer than I. And so she ran across some friends or some associates one day. And they reminded her of some, some people they knew who were caught up in a fire. Now, they didn't get burned, but they inhaled a lot of smoke, and they were out, but they were in the hospital. And so they wanted to ask her if she would go and pray for them. So she came and got me, and they want to go here and let's pray for these people. I went on there with one intention. These people getting up today, because these words are going to go down, and I'm telling you. So we went in, and the, the doctor was in. I guess it's doing whatever the doctors do. And so we introduced ourselves and what we were there for. So he said, okay, got the liberty, go for it. So they left out. And she and I sat there and we prayed for at least close to an hour. We would pray together and then we would take breaks. And we watched these people. Well, in this particular location, there was just one. And nothing was happening. So we decided to go back to the chapel and pray up. Because we didn't have, we, the, the power wasn't there with us. So we went to the chapel and we prayed up. And we came back. When we came back, the nurse was in there. And so we decided to tell her our purpose. And she told us, well, go right ahead. But it had been dead two days. Dead. Two days. Now, nobody told me that these people were dead. They just said they were out. Maybe in a coma or something. I did not go there to pray for the dead. Because <laughs> I had no idea, no faith at all that I could move the dead. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you this. I've had, in these past 40 years, I've had about as much success as waking you up to the knowledge that you are in hell, to the fact that you can change this thing anytime you want to. I've had just about as much success with this message to you as I had with that person dead on that bed. <laughs> so I guess that means maybe we're just dead too. <laughs> Think about that. Bye-bye.